My object is a handmade sign. It's roughly made, but pretty, and consists of three short planks nailed together. The irregular boards are a joyful canary yellow on which someone skilled painted the name. Red and blue Greek capital letters spell Staikopoulou, Taverna. I came by the sign several decades ago when I was a student. I'd come to Greece from Cambridge to do research for a PhD in social anthropology. My base was in Nafplio. Like many young foreigners who discover themselves at the same time as another country, I was undergoing a sort of epiphany. I loved learning Greek and participant observation allowed me to meet an amazing variety of people. There might be morning coffee with a communist and an evening liqueur with one of Nafplia's old aristocracy. I spoke with Roma and policemen, housewives and immigrants, tourists and kamaikia, the men who specialised in picking up foreign women. I also made some dear friends and I think it was going out to eat with some of them that we passed a taverna that was being refurbished. There, lying by a pile of rubbish, was this sign, old, worn and beautiful. I asked permission and set off with it, proudly clasped under my arm. We were in a narrow street behind the town's main square, Odos Daikopoulou, and the sign was for Taverna Staikopoulou. But I didn't know much about Staikopoulos, the revolutionary after whom both were named. It was clear that Nafplia was an important centre during the Greek War of Independence. The town was bursting with memorials to wild-looking rebel leaders with fulsome moustaches and belts bristling with weapons. Kolokotronis, the most famous of all, was honoured with a large equestrian statue. History was kept alive. Staikos Staikopoulos was evidently an ambitious and daring 23-year-old. In 1822, the year after the start of the War of Independence, he did something that looked impossible. He besieged and then captured Nafplio's great fortress of Palamidi. Palamidi is huge. It looms over Nafplio. The Ottoman Turks must have felt safe up there in one of the most secure fortresses in the whole Mediterranean. This triumph is celebrated in Nafplio each year. On the 30th of November, people gather at Stykopoulos Park. There's a white marble sculpture of the hero dressed in fustanella kilt and fez. He might have started off life as a fur and leather trader in Arcadia, but he was soon a young general. 200 years after the 1821 Greek Revolution is a big birthday, but it's also a complex anniversary. Roderick Beaton calls the long revolution against the Ottomans a bloodbath. There were appalling atrocities on both sides. When Greece was finally declared an independent nation-state, it was largely down to the great powers of Britain, France and Russia, and it was they who sent in a king, as it happens, to Nafplio, which was still the newly established capital. It's hardly surprising that Staikopoulos, Kolokotronis and various Greek revolutionaries weren't mad keen on the teenage King Otto and his Bavarian entourage. The feelings were mutual. General Stikopoulos and General Kolkotronis were thrown into jail. And even if they were heroes of the revolution, both were sentenced to death. Ultimately, they were pardoned, but Stikopoulos died on the day of his release, aged 36. Looking at my sign after all these years, it speaks much more to me than when I picked it up. As the name of a taverna, it celebrates the Greek dedication to food, wine and music. It honours a fighter in the War of Independence. And at the bottom of the sign, the painter has put a short meander of the Greek key pattern, like shorthand for ancient Hellenic culture. As the new country created its identity, it was a conscious decision to place this alongside Christianity as a defining feature. But for me, this object is also a reminder of my youth. 
It marks the start of a lifetime's relationship with Greece. And whenever I see its bright colours, I feel happy.